Hello, my dear Forex students, Eric Quere here. Welcome to lecture two of the Liveversity Forex trading course. I'm very excited to have you here. If you had gone through the introductory uh, lecture and uh, secondly, lecture one, you need also lecture two. If you had not gone through the introductory video in the first lecture, please check the link in the description and ensure you watch the introductory video and most importantly lecture one before you proceed with this lecture basically in lecture two we are going to look at uh, part one two three and four according to our diversity forex trading course timetable part one is basically basic introduction to forex trading part two forex terminologies part three currency pairs and then lastly, part four, trading times. Without wasting much of your time, let's just proceed to lecture two, part one, basic introduction to forex trading. As you all know by now, by definition, international forex market is a global financial exchange avenue where banks, businesses, governments, investors, traders come to exchange and speculate on foreign currencies. Prices in the forex market are influenced by both economic and non-economic factors, for instance, demand, supply, competition, market conditions, crucial political and macroeconomic news, a change in interest rates, and other monetary policies in different countries. The forex market is the world's largest and most volatile financial market with an average daily turnover of more than 3.98 trillion this is a lot of money that is out there for grab so if you can't participate in the foreign currency trading market you can be able to claim your share of the 3.98 trillion this is the biggest market in the world as you can see and it is live each and every day and with these 3.98 almost 4 trillion exchanging hands in a single day even real estate isn't able to achieve that amount even the transport sector the tourism sector this is a very big source of income this is a very big market that is out there for you and fortunate for you the diversity forex trading course will introduce you on how to claim your share out of the 3.98 trillion or even four trillion that exchange hand in the foreign currency market daily the forex market is open 24 hours a day five days a week with most important trading centers being located in london that is the, the uk and then we have tokyo japan new york in the us zurich frankfurt hong kong singapore paris and sydney it is vital to note that there is no central marketplace for the forex market. Trading is instead conducted over the counter. Forex trading, on the other hand, is defined as speculative trading with the help of commercial banks and brokerage companies. For example, if you think that the euro is going to rise against the US dollar, you can buy the euro USD currency pair low and sell it at a higher price to make a profit. If you buy the euro USD pair and then the dollar strengthens, you will then be in a losing position. Thus, it is important to be aware of the risk involved in forex trading and not only the reward. In the recent past, only commercial banks and large capital owners had an opportunity to make profit in forex trading. In this day and age, any individual can start earning in the forex market thanks to the online trading platforms and numerous brokers. Contrary to the beliefs of many misinformed people, Forex is not a get-rich-quick scheme. It takes patience, discipline, humility, confidence, and a passion to learn daily in order to succeed. Success in trading is not a gift from above. Every average individual can learn how to trade. It is very important to have a willingness to learning and a good teacher. Fortunate for you, you have me here as your mentor and teacher and the diversity forex trading course to introduce you to the market when i started before i came across my mentor in israel i had no teacher i was just gambling i had not uh, learned anything i had not gone through any course but you are fortunate because you are going through this course before you can test out the market it is almost difficult to make it alone in forex you must have a mentor you must work as a team you must read widely and most importantly you must keep your emotions and fear in check you are lucky to join a team of humble forex traders 
with sound trading strategies. If you remain part of this team, you can be sure to see your capital grow significantly. What's more, by interacting with the best, you'll definitely learn their ways and tricks to navigate the forex waves successfully. We shall look at the forex market participants and we have highlighted some of them in the introductory part above. And the biggest forex market participants are banks. Secondly, financial institutions, for instance, hedge funds, mutual funds and various consulting companies, government stock central banks. Governments are also able to participate in the foreign currency trading market by investing the money they collect in taxes and also by investing the money they collect from retirement benefits uh, packages like uh, in Kenya you have the NSSF for retirement and then the NHIF for health so all those monies collected by the government governments also participate in the foreign currency trading market to, to invest that money and to ensure it keeps growing as uh, you prepare for retirement and then fourthly companies they need to use the foreign exchange market to pay for goods and services from foreign countries and also to sell goods and services to foreign countries uh, in companies companies that mostly export goods and those that import they really participate in the foreign currency market when it comes to exchanging uh, the currencies in order to buy their goods and services or to sell their goods and services and then fifth individuals if you have ever traveled to a different country and exchange your money into a different currency at the bank or the airport you have already participated in the currency market uh, for example my first time to participate in the foreign currency market was uh, when i was in uh, a college a fourth year when i was trying to trade and then the second time when i was traveling to israel and then i was able to exchange uh, my kenyan shillings into the u.s dollar and then in israel i was able to exchange my money from the u.s dollar into the israeli shekel so i participated in the foreign currency market and if you've ever traveled then uh, unknowingly or knowingly you have also participated in the foreign currency trading market sixth we have investors there are people who just invest in foreign currency uh, markets like if you are not interested in learning how to trade but you have money to invest then you can be able to invest in the foreign currency market and have somebody else manage your account you'll still be a participant and then uh, seventh retail traders like you and me i participate in the foreign currency trading market directly as a retail trader because i can always open a position at any uh, time and i'm able to make money as you can see uh, right here in the screen i'm live in the market uh, the same way banks participate in the foreign currency trading market as an individual i'm also able to do the same things to the internet and the world wide web we shall move on to part two of the Liveversity Forex Trading Course Lecture 2, that is Forex Terminologies. Below are some of the common terms we'll hear or meet in the world of Forex. This is just a collection of a few. You will learn more as you become familiar with currency trading. And the first term I will come to or you've heard me mention a lot is a broker. And this is basically a company that acts as an intermediary between buyers and sellers. Brokers, clients are private investors like you and me. It is difficult to participate in the foreign currency trading market without a broker. And then secondly, we have bears, stock sellers, market participants who expect the market to decline and therefore sell. Looking at this chart of the live foreign currency market, you can see uh, mostly the bears are those who sell. You see the red candles like this candle here. Uh, these are bears selling because they uh, speculate that the market will go down in, the, in value. And as you can see the blue line here, it is uh, the 100 hour moving average. I sketched it on my chart and then the red one is uh, the 50 hour moving average. I will disclose to you uh, what these lines are in detail in the coming lectures and once uh, the bear saw that the price was below the 100 hour moving average many people came and sold and as you can see the price kept going lower and then there was some kind of uh, consolidation and then it started going higher uh, on hitting the 100 hour moving average line it could not break the line so the price kept uh, 
uh, consolidating there and then finally kept dropping. I will teach you this uh, technical trading tools in the upcoming lecture, so don't you worry. Uh, I'm just here to explain to you what bears are, those who sell in the market and the red candle represents the bears. All these candles and all these uh, flashy technical analysis tools, I will be able to explain to you what each one of them means in the upcoming lectures. You should not worry about it. And then we have three bulls, stock buyers, market participants who expect the market to rise and therefore buy. Back to my chart, you can see the green candles. These are guys who speculate that the market is going to rise. So after a consolidation, you can see uh, there is a non-trend here. The market is non-trending. Uh, if I drew a horizontal line here, uh, you will be able to see that uh, the, this red horizontal line shows that uh, this was a point of support. Uh, the, the price could not go below that line, so the market participants called bulls so that that was an opportunity uh, to buy because the market could not break that horizontal line at 1.3512. Number four, we have downtrend, the tendency of the price moving downward. As you can see on the chart, when the price was moving downwards, this is what is called a downtrend. And then when the market is not either moving upwards or downwards, and we call it moving sideways, it is basically consolidating. After a consolidation, we have an uptrend which is the next term. So when the market is moving downwards, that is a downtrend. And when it is moving upwards, that is an uptrend. Back to our lecture, you can see uh, number four, we have the downtrend, which uh, when the market is moving downwards. And then number seven, we have an uptrend, the tendency of the market going up, as you can see from our chart here, uh, during this time period, the green, consecutive green candles formed, that is the tendency of the market going up, and that is what we call an uptrend. Going back to number five, bearish, the tendency of the market moving down. Uh, bearish is same with the downtrend, and then bullish, the tendency of the market going up. So as we said, we have two major forces participating in the foreign currency market. We have bears and bulls. So bulls usually tend to drag the market, uh, to drive the market upwards. And that is why we call the movement of the market upwards bullish, as you can see the green candles or an uptrend. And then bears tend to drive or drag the price lower. As you can see here, we have the bearish or the downtrend. Those are the basic terms in the foreign currency market, and you will learn about them more and more as we progress. Number eight, we have resistance. A price level where bearish forces are strong enough to prevent bullish forces from taking the price higher. So we have these two forces, the bearish forces and the bullish forces. As you can see, the price point where uh, the bearish forces are strong enough to prevent the bullish forces from taking the price higher is called resistance. As you can see here at the blue line, that is my 100 hour moving average. Let me just sketch another horizontal line there. And we come, we sit here. As you can see, the price started rising from here after the consolidation. And then it started rising on hitting the blue line, as you can see, and the horizontal line, the price could not keep going any higher. There was some kind of force preventing it from going higher. And that's, that is the force from the bears or the market participants who are selling. Those who are buying could not keep taking the price higher because there was a resistance from those who are selling. It's like a tug of war. Those who are selling or the bears who are dragging the price lower and those who are buying were trying to take the prices higher, their forces balance. And the point where their forces balance when the uh, bulls are trying to take the price higher and the bears are pulling them back is what we call a resistance. And then the opposite of the resistance is called a support 
or a price level where bullish forces are strong enough to prevent bearish forces from taking the price any lower. As you can see on the chart, down here during the consolidation, the bearish forces were strong, taking the price low from from around uh, from a price level of let me just sketch another horizontal line from a price level of 1.36302 all the way to a price level of 1.35012 the the bears were in control and then there came a point where there was a consolidation that is the bullish forces were opposing the bearish forces and as you can see the market was moving sideways and as you can see from my horizontal line the price couldn't go any lower than 1.35012 that is a point of support where the bearish forces are being opposed by the bullish forces from taking the price any lower that point we call it a point of support and then number 10 we have stop loss an order to exit a market at a specific price in order to limit losses so when you open a position in the foreign currency market for example i want to buy the euro usd i right click and then open new order the pop-up screen will bring options to you instant execution you can execute immediately or you can execute it as a pending order and then you'll set your volume that is the lot size as you can see and then of course you can set a stop loss this is the price point where you will automatically uh, be moved out of the market or your position will automatically close at a loss if the market is trending opposite to the trade you had open i will be able to show you how to set a stop loss in the upcoming uh, lectures and then the next time we have a take profit an order to exit the market at a specific target price in order to lock in the accumulated profit the opposite of of a stop loss is a take profit and as you can see beside the stop loss we have the take profit you can also set a specific point where the market will automatically close and lock in a profit for you uh, if you open uh, a position whether you are online or offline the market will automatically uh, take the profit for you or in the case of a stop loss it will automatically close you out of the market or close your position to limit your losses we shall explore more of the take profit and stop losses in the upcoming lectures Term number 12, long position, buying a currency pair with the expectation that it will rise in value in order to make a profit. Going long is simply buying. So if you come here in the market, you'll see that you have an option. If, I, for example, I right click and place new order, I have an option down here to either buy or sell. So if I buy, that is I'm taking a long position. So long position is simply buying and then the opposite of long position term number 13 short position selling a currency pair with the expect uh, with the expectation that it will drop in value and buying it back at a lower value to make profit if i decide not to buy and instead sell then i will be shorting the market or or taking a short position 14 we have dovish when the monetary policy is dovish it means policymakers like the central bank favor sellers stock bears because they want to stimulate economic growth by guarding against deflation dovishness is evidenced by low interest rates and then 15 we have hawkish when the monetary policy is hawkish policymakers favor buyers stock bulls to guard against excessive inflation hawkishness is evidenced by rising interest rates those are some of the terms that you will meet in the in your foreign currency trading career and i just went through a few of them you will learn more about them in the upcoming lectures and i will introduce you to more of these terms as the lectures progress part three will simply look at the currency pairs and currency pairs are classified into two we have major currency pairs and minor currency pairs major currency pairs part one 
any currency pair with the United States dollar is considered to be a major currency pair. Major currency pairs are the most active stock volatile currencies in the foreign exchange world. We have different currency pairs, the euro, USD, initials uh, representing the euro versus the United States dollar, the Great Britain pound versus the United States dollar, the United States dollar versus the Swiss franc, the United States dollar versus the Japanese yen, the New Zealand dollar versus the United States dollar, the Australian dollar versus the United States dollar, the United States dollar versus the Canadian dollar, and then the United States dollar versus the Chinese yuan, and then lastly the United States dollar versus the South African rand. There are many currency pairs, primary and secondary. Primary are simply the major currency pairs, and any currency pairs with the United States dollar is considered a major currency pair. And then we have minor currency pairs or the secondary currency pairs. Any cross of the major currencies is called a minor currency pair. Minor currencies form the majority of the currency pairs in the forex market. They are less volatile compared to the major currencies. However, minor currencies can also become volatile on some occasions. Their volatility is mostly influenced by the volatility of the major currency pairs. Uh, some of the profitable minor currency pairs include the Euro, Great Britain Pound, the Great Britain Pound, Japanese Yen, Euro, Australian Dollar, the New Zealand Dollar, Japanese Yen, the Great Britain Pound versus the Canadian Dollar, and much more. So any cross of the major currency pairs, you will get the minor currency pairs. We shall be able to look at them in detail uh, as the lectures progress or in the next lectures as you can see in the chat uh, let me just close this we are not ready to buy or sell because i'm basically introducing you to the market the major currency pairs you can have a list of them from my metatrader 5 as you can see we have the euro usd the great britain pound uh, the usd the usd the swiss franc uh, the USD Japanese yen and much more. You can add any currency pair of your country if you are from like China, the Chinese yuan, the Chinese yuan as you can see and much more. You simply tap in the search button and you can add a currency pair to your chart going forward. There are very many currency pairs, both major and minor currencies. I'll be able to show you how to set your trading chart in order to accommodate a majority of them and the volatile ones the volatile ones like the uh, the euro united states dollar you can see that it is very volatile the candles are big and this is uh, just the one hour chart if we progress and go to maybe a two hour chart and much more you'll be able to see and uh, be able to visualize from the time frames how volatile this currency pairs can be for example for the for my chart of the uh, united states dollar and the canadian dollar let me just change the chart to the united states dollar the euro or the euro united states dollar as you can see the chart is quite volatile and if i change my my time frame to maybe the the 15 minutes time frame you can see the candles are bigger and if I change, I go to charts and change my time frame to like a one minute chart, you can see the currents are, uh, the, the candles are quite bigger for the currencies and you can be able to adjust your time frames in whichever time frame you want. You simply go to charts and then time frames. Um, I usually trade with the one hour chart is the comfortable one as you can see another major currency pair uh, that is the usd card or the U, uh, united states dollar canadian uh, dollar you can see the candles are really big uh, this means that this currency pair is volatile and a very good currency pair to trade in the market that is part three of the liveversity forex trading course lecture two we go to part four trading times even though the forex market operates for 24 hours five days a week it is not active at all times market behavior greatly differs from one trading session to another here are the major trading sessions to help you plan your trading schedule effectively there are different trading uh, sessions and trading times 
Uh, basically, we have three main, and that is the Asian trading time, we have the United States trading time, and then you, we have the European trading time. Those are the major ones. And as you can see in my chart here, we have the Asian trading times. It opens at around, uh, it's usually, it depends on your time zones. These are different time zones. And in my time zone, it uh, opens at around 7 uh, at around 7 p.m. and then we have the European uh, trading uh, time it opens at around 3 a.m. in the morning uh, in the Kenyan time we are usually uh, two hours ahead so it's around 5 a.m. in the morning and then we have the American trading time which opens around 8 a.m. in the Kenyan time is maybe around 10 there so you find that the European trading time or trading session usually overlaps with the uh, American trading uh, session. So you need to be aware of those different trading sessions. You need to compare them. Uh, they vary from country to country. You need to compare with your country. You need to be able to see uh, when each trading session opens. The market tends to be volatile, for example, when the European trading time uh, overlaps with the American trading session. In Kenya, it's around 10 a.m. in the morning. You'll find that the market moves a lot. And then also the market tends to be volatile when major uh, fundamental news are being released, and that's around 8 a.m. in Kenyan time at around 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. you'll find that the market moves aggressively. It depends on the type of uh, fundamental news that is being released. So I will be able to disclose to you fundamental news, different types of fundamental news and the times they are released in the upcoming lectures. So that's it for the trading session. They vary as I told you uh, depending on your country. For example, the US and Asian sessions are notable for aggression and considerable enthusiasm of the market participants. On the other hand, most trading operations are executed during the European session. And then the Australian and New Zealand sessions are rather calm because during this hours only banks of two countries and some financial corporations perform deals and then with the opening of the Asian session market participants start active trading during these hours the Japanese economic events influence the market behavior and then lastly at the beginning of the London session a fluctuation in currency prices can be rather sharp however most interesting events happen during the u.s session due to publication of most microeconomic data and other news the revealed information has a significant impact on the market expectations and consequently on the currency pairs that's it for this lecture guys see you again in lecture three where i will be tackling uh, another important lesson you need to learn according to our timetable in lecture three you should expect uh, to uh, go through the following part one inside a forex trader toolbox introduction to metatrader four and five now i'll give you a basic introduction to this platform our live trading platform and then uh, as you go on part three will uh, tackle opening a demo account i will take you through the process of opening a demonstration account so that you can have a chart like mine and an interface like mine and then uh, part four i will be able to tackle types of trends charts and rules of plotting and then part five types of orders and then lastly order execution that will be coming up uh, in lecture number three that's it for this lecture guys ensure you open your emails and check lecture 3 tomorrow for a chance to learn how to set up your metatrader 4 and 5 in the basic introduction uh, of our main trading platform that is the metatrader 4 and 5 that's it for this uh, lecture guys see you again in the next lecture may god bless you